now on Too Fat for 15, 500 pounds and counting. A look back at the journey of these dangerously overweight teenagers who took on a fight for their lives. When I got out of that car, I felt lonely and deserted. This is the talk I gave myself. You are out of your mind. My biggest struggle was I just didn't want to be here. I'm Tanisha, and I've lost 160 pounds. When I first saw Tanisha, I was scared. I will tell you this, till my dying day, I did not want to come to all three. The tape didn't fit around me. Ow! I'm okay. My family was not ready to embrace the Wall Street program. We don't eat fast food in this home. Let me try the beefy five layer burrito. 99.5 pounds! A hundred down, only a few more hundred to go. I'm Emily, and I've lost 72 pounds in nine months. If you're too big for this world, people notice and make fun of you. This is pretty much my last resort. I hate you. <laughs> I was the youngest one here trying to lose weight. You know, look at me now, you can't make fun of me. I'm Scotty and I've lost 71 pounds. That's some good teriyaki. What is that? It's frozen yogurt. You said that in my turn. I was disappointed. I saw myself as a monster. I felt like I was going to break the scale. It's one of the worst things to know. You weigh more than both of your parents. So this is just your starting weight. And you're only 13 years old. Tanisha, Scotty, and Emily share their struggles and thoughts, plus never-before-seen footage on Too Fat for 15, 500 pounds and counting. Wellspring definitely changed my life. I uh, wouldn't be the person I am today. If I had known how long the road I was gonna have to start going down, I would not have had the courage to come. My time at camp was unforgettable, even though people think, oh, it's a fat camp, like, whatever. It, it changes your life. Going into this place, I had no clue it was gonna work. I figured it's not gonna work, so why even try? Day one of Wellspring was just a very emotional day for me. When I got out of that car and looked around, I was thinking, oh my gosh. I felt lonely, um, deserted, and it was by far the worst feeling I've ever had in my life. I will tell you this, till my dying day, I do not want to come to Wellspring. My parents wanted me to come here. And I didn't understand why. Imagine being 11 years old and being sent away from home for being too fat. <laughs> it was my first week at Wellspring and I weighed 216 pounds and I was really homesick. I was really emotional. I missed my family. I didn't want to be there. My mom is like 170 and my dad's like 210 and they're losing weight because they can. I don't like it. It's, it's just gross to think that you could let yourself get that heavy at such a young age and not even, you know, realize it. This is rough. We're 12 hours away. It's not like he's 25 minutes down the road at summer camp, you know. It'll be hard for him, myself, my wife, his little brother at home, but it's what's best for him. Once I got here, it was all overwhelming and just a big shock. Looking back now, I saw myself as a monster, as someone disgusting that didn't deserve to be around anyone. My heart breaks, because I know I, I had something to do with it. You know, I, I know I did. It's one of the worst things to know when you find out that you weigh more than both of your parents, and you're only 13 years old. Hello, hello. Hi. Welcome. Hi, where, hi, where are you? 
Melody. Nice to meet you. How you doing? <laughs> I would get so tired from just walking short distances. I would see other students and they would walk so easily and without even thinking about it. I wish I could do that. This is Tanisha. This is Tanisha. That was the first time I'd been out of state for more than a day. I mean, really, people, I was like, I was like a fish out of water. It's a big step for her, but uh, Tanisha's a very strong, intelligent young lady. She's very smart, so it's a great thing. Okay. You're good, okay? Love you. You're not gonna cry, are you? Oh. Come on. Okay, 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 okay. When my parents left and I was there, alone in this strange new place. I just wanted them to come back and take me home. But they didn't. You're too big for this world. People notice, they make fun of you. It's not all about looks, but in the world now, um, a majority of how people judge you is by looks. I just want to be normal. I just feel like if I didn't come here, then I really wouldn't have a chance. Good boy. We're done, Emily. You did it. People call me fat and stuff, and I was always upset, but I never showed it in front of them. But now that I look back at it, I'm like, you know, look at me now. You can't make fun of me. I think Emily's come really far. It's crazy to watch you there and to be sitting here right next to you. I used to be really homesick. I wanted to go home, but I got tougher, and I started to realize this was going to benefit me, you know, now and in the long run. Most of our students have complicated relationships with food. Most of the time, we see students who use it as an emotional filler. When I first got here, I was so hungry all the time. It was insane. At first, I wanted food a lot because they control your portions. Whenever I would get hungry, I would always want something big. I love chicken, fried chicken, which isn't good at all. I think I was addicted to food, and just coming here is fighting your food addiction, your food battle. A simple snack would be a full heaping plate of potato chips. I mean, it was just terrible. What we're trying to do here is to help them see that there's this whole world of food that they haven't explored, primarily fruits and vegetables. My taste buds have definitely changed a lot, um, considering I, I don't want to eat any of the stuff I used to. My taste buds have definitely changed. Uh, like, I eat a lot more vegetables, a lot more fruits, and developed a taste for celery. I think. A lot of people would see giving up all the bad foods as a sacrifice, but I'm just like, it's, I'm good. Before I came to Wall Street, I did not know what my weight was at all. Good morning, Tanisha. I thought maybe I was in the 400. <laughs> With Tanisha's family, we were reported one thing by the parents and found out another as far as her weight goes. Can you step up? Weight was reported at 425. Her actual weight is 510. Whoa. It was crazy for me to realize that in order to get to my healthy weight, I would have to lose over 300 pounds. And I just realized that. Thank you. You must be Scott. It's got B, right? I'm Heather. To be honest, I felt like I was going to break the scale. I, I didn't want to step on it. So this is just your starting weight. Hang in there. Welcome. Great, right, thanks, Scott. It's terrible. Nobody ever needs to be 366 pounds. One of the reasons that we do body measurements is it's a tangible way for us to show students their progress throughout the course of the program. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take measurements from around your waist, around your hips, around your arms, around your shoulders, and around your thigh. 
it was shocking. Being measured is not something that I thought about. If I can show somebody that they showed up with a 50 inch waist and they left here with a 30, that's powerful. Come on over. So arms down, chest up. I felt embarrassed. The tape couldn't even fit all the way around me. He had to estimate the rest of the way. I had a 70 inch tape measure that's always been long enough and it didn't fit. Off the top of my head, I think that is the largest waist and shoulders and hips we've ever had on a student here. I feel like if I had known how far I had to come weight wise and inch wise before I came to Wall Street, I wouldn't have come. Four weeks after she arrived, it was time to measure Tanisha again, and I was worried about going in there. I didn't know what to expect. OK, here's what I need you to do. Can you reach around the back? Grab that. There you go. OK. Now, Tanisha, can you point to your belly button, please? I was so nervous. My first measurement, the tape didn't fit around me. You've lost five inches from on your waist. Oh, wow. And you've lost six inches from on your hips. You're doing so well, girl. And you've lost three inches from on your shoulders. <laughs> And it was two and a half inches from anyway. It's 19 inches. It just made my day. All right. Good job. It made my week, actually. Four weeks, 19 inches. Wow. Coming up. I'm a strong believer that if I hadn't come to Wellspring, I would be six feet in the ground right now. This is like still like, screw this. I do not want to be here anymore. I hate you. And later. Yeah, she's angry. I felt a little attacked from Coach Nicole. Life before Wellspring wasn't great. I wanted to lose weight, but nothing's worked. I spent a lot of time feeling trapped in my body. Before I came to Wellspring, I was on depression pills, and if I didn't take them, I couldn't function. I think I was addicted to food pretty much always thinking about it and wanting it and um, sneaking it. My problem with food started when I was about five or six years old. I was eating too much cheese and junk food. I would eat it about every day. My life consisted of bed and four walls. The first time I took her to the hospital, they recognized she was overweight at two years old. When I was very young, I was diagnosed with a disease called Blount's, and I had a lot of surgeries. The recovery time for a surgery was six to eight months, and that was time that I spent in bed. It was a vicious cycle. I would sneak food into my room and hide out so no one would see me. Food became a comfort for him, but he um, didn't care. He, he didn't care. He didn't feel like anybody else cared about him. So why should he care about himself? The problems may come later on down the line, and I'm sure they would. She might not make it past 30, you know? You never know. I mean, we were point blank telling her, Emily, if we, if we don't get this issue with your overeating of food under control, you're going to die. I'm a strong believer that if I hadn't come to Wellspring, I would be six feet in the ground right now. I would not have made it. At Wellspring, we're all about overcoming the physical and mental barriers that can hold us back. My biggest struggle was I just didn't want to be here in general. 
I definitely have a love-hate relationship with Will's ring. My biggest physical challenge is being able to walk. Tanisha would always pass the hill and look at it and just kind of be like, no, uh, not ever going to be able to do that. And as soon as I heard her say she'd never be able to do it, I knew she was going to do it. <laughs> I never expected to try the hill so early. It was just, oh, we're doing it, OK. <laughs> this is the talk I gave myself. You are out of your mind. This is horrible. What are you doing right now? This is awesome. This is horrible. I don't know. Well, you better figure it out, because this is ridiculous. What are you doing? I don't know. All right, give me your hand. Let's do this. Uh, Come on. We're going. Oh, I don't like this already. You are doing awesome. Man, you're doing awesome. You are flying. I remember that day. That was an awesome day. I just didn't think I could do it at all. Did uh, walking the hill, did it give you a lot more confidence to do other things? It was the start of me beginning to feel like I could actually be successful here. Scott was an extreme challenge. Uh, he was shut down. He was not interested in school. Hey, Scott, get up, yo. It's time for activity, man. It's gonna be late again. Most kids my age don't want to do something unless they absolutely have to do it. Scotty's biggest struggle was just getting up and doing it. Scotty, are you out of bed this morning? You're supposed to be out of bed at 6 o'clock when you get woken up. Scotty struggles to get out of bed because that's a learned behavior. He's not been held accountable for poor choices. OK, I'm coming back in one minute. I expect to see you out of bed. Certain rules, I think, are unnecessary. Not the rules, but the schedule itself is pretty strict. Scotty's top excuses are jumpy. Uh, I'm feeling really, really dizzy. My stomach hurts like real bad, and I feel real nauseous. Jumpy. I didn't drink enough water today, so I'm really dehydrated. I've got a real bad headache and migraine. Jumpy. This activity is really, really hard for me. I'm not gonna be able to finish it. I really feel very good this morning. And then of course I say, "Come on, let's give it a try and push through." And then he just gives me this look. I know when I get that look, in about five minutes, I'm going to see Waterworks. Scotty cries because it's effective. Tears roll down his eyes, he doesn't have to go to school. Tears roll down his eyes, he doesn't have to go on the one mile walk. He always finds excuses why he can't be on time. And it's never really his fault. It can feel like a prison sometimes. Like, you have to get up at a certain time, do things at a certain time, and has to be on schedule and this, 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 and this. Kind of like a prison. <laughs> Last week, Emily was informed by her parents that she would probably be going to summer camp because she still has quite a bit of weight to lose. I don't want to be away from my family anymore, and I'm probably going to the camp now. <laughs> well, when I found out, I had to go to summer camp for the whole summer, so 10 weeks. Um, I was really pissed. Hello? Hi, Mommy. Hey. I just called you because I wanted to talk about camp. Okay. Um, I mean, you already know I don't want to go. I know, honey, but there's not any way you're ready to be home for 12 weeks in the summer. Emily has a side of her that is this very assertive, strong-willed young lady that, you know, has evolved. My biggest struggle was I just didn't want to be here in general. And even though I lost, like, 34 pounds in 16 weeks, I was like, still, like, screw this. I do not want to be here anymore. I hate you. I do not hate my mom. I love you, mom. But sometimes, you know, I feel like the decisions that you made were not the best for me. Talk to my son's mom. I bet you that hurt the mother's feelings. But I will tell that mother right now that that saved your daughter's life. 
when you're angry like that, it just comes out. So. Sometimes, honestly, if you don't hear your kids say I hate you, you're probably not doing a good job. Coming up. Go, bear crawl, bear crawl. This is like torture. Go! It doesn't get any tougher than the gun. Pop it out, pop it out. What, what is that? Frozen yogurt. Early on in your program, off-campus challenges were literally challenges. Exactly. My big thing was always push and control, and especially at home. Everything is all about transferring the skills from Wellspring to home. And it's scary to think about going back to that and having those same kinds of temptations. I'm just making Rice Krispie Treats because they're on program and they're really good. I'm making these for my birthday party. I've just lost 40 pounds, and I was really working my butt off until the day of my birthday party when I made Rice Krispie Treats. That was not a very good day. For now, I'm going to do one container of marshmallow fluff. For two tablespoons, it's 40 calories and zero grams of fat. Technically, Rice Krispie Treats are on program. It's just it's basically like air. Air? People were, like saying I shouldn't have eaten that, but they were on program, okay? Mm -hmm. And I didn't eat the whole pan, so you can chill out. We're good. Twin Dragons was, oh God. It was a mistake, but everyone slips up. We sometimes take students there for a dine out challenge to test their ability to make healthy choices. I don't think it's going to be too hard. I mean, I know what I can and can't have. It is possible to eat on program at Twin Dragons, but it's definitely not easy. I wouldn't know a whole lot about, you know, what kind of Chinese food is on program and is not on program because we don't do Chinese. Temptation definitely got the better of me in that, uh, that incident. I had some good teriyaki. The quesadillas I knew weren't on program at all. I've been eating a lot of chicken. The teriyaki chicken, I was a bit skeptical about it. I didn't know for sure. Teriyaki chicken, <laughs> okay, it's you fried know. before they go in. You know teriyaki well. You knew exactly what you are doing. I was thinking, I haven't had this in so long. I'm eating it. You just took this opportunity to go crazy. Yeah. It's just like, what? And I have no self-control. I worry about you. I was really proud of the food choices he made. I guess up until the ice cream. <laughs> what? What is that? It's frozen yogurt. You sat there and walked her. I was disappointed to find out that that's not what it was. Frozen yogurt? Oh, they didn't even have frozen yogurt. OK, Miss Rice Krispies. OK, they're fat free, and I did not eat the whole pan. It was the second time I'd ever been off campus. It was my second time I'd ever been faced with off-program foods, and I caved. It happened. <laughs> Takeout Friday is pretty regular in my house. Takeout Fridays usually would consist of Chinese food, pasta, Wendy's, French fries, pizza, burgers, fried fish, fried chicken, fried, fried, fried. I don't like cooking. I'm tired of cooking, especially in the summertime. You know, I mean, why? Just grab something and go. 
Being surrounded by fast food is definitely a tremendous test of your willpower. Friday, we stopped at a seafood place because I wanted to get fish. Is it all fried here? But they only fried it. So uh, I didn't get anything. Um, tonight, I got fish. Nobody else wanted anything from there, so we had to go to a different place. Let me try the beefy five layer burrito. Anything else? Yeah, let me have two of those. That's it. They all got dinner, and I got a diet soda. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, have a great Thank day. you. My family was not ready to embrace the Wall Street program like I had. <laughs> Wall Spring is about weight loss. One of the biggest components to successful weight loss is physical activity. That makes me the most hated man on campus. Basically, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start here. You're going to run all the way down there, and you come meet me back on the bridge over there. It's like, how am I going to do this? You're crazy. OK, ready, set, go. 216 pounds and you try to run a mile. What am I doing? Like, I look ridiculous trying to run it. I was in total, total pain during my first time mile. I was 366 pounds. I was so overweight that it was hard for me to walk, let alone run. When I first saw Scotty run his time mile, I was really impressed. I gave him the option to sit out, and he didn't take me up on it. He just kept going despite the pain. Yeah, I've seen Scott coming around the corner right there, and he's hobbling a little bit. Oh, he's running. Good job, Scott. I completely gunned it at the end there. Uh, I just ran as fast as I could, because I wanted to get it over as fast as I could. No problem, Scott. 26.07. Tanisha's first time mile was a little scary. We weren't sure if she was capable of doing it. Coach Nicole and I, we kind of trust each other. She didn't leave my side because she believed in me. There was a point where I fell, I slipped on some mice. Oh! After I fell, I didn't want to stop. It made me want to finish even more. On that last lap, she got straight back up. It just makes me really proud to watch that and see her accomplish something she didn't think possible. Congratulations, you just finished a mile. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> OK, and you did it in one hour, 22 minutes, and 19 seconds. Woo! That is no good. <laughs> I was proud of the fact that I didn't give up. It was a scary realization that I had that maybe I am strong enough to do this. I didn't know it. I wouldn't walk if I didn't have to. I don't like walking. I don't like running. If it was a possibility for me to swim everywhere I needed to be, then I would. I love swimming. I love the water. It makes me feel weightless. It really is the only place where I am that I'm, where I'm not in pain. Seeing Tanisha in the water is a sight to be seen. She is a whole different person. She has freedom. She has all the mobility in the world. And it's just that one time you can see she just is free of her body. In the water, I am a mermaid. <laughs> when it comes to sweat and sweat, it doesn't get any tougher than the gauntlet. All right, you need to pay attention, because if you don't do it right, you will hear how wrong you did it. The gauntlet is by far the worst thing I have ever done. Everything has to be completed to perfection. 
It's a horrible thing to do to somebody. It was not even fun. This is like torture. Hey. Drop him. Go, bear crawl, bear crawl. Pick him up, pick him up. Go, come on, pop it out, pop it out. Extend. There you go. It's definitely more boot camp related of a workout. Go! It's one right after another, whether it's 30 jabs, 25 setups, what have you, as quickly as you can. Down! John T, whoa. It's a love-hate relationship. Sometimes you just want to punch for the face. 30, go! It gets annoying sometimes, but he's definitely doing it for the better. Go ahead. Oh, oh, fast one here. I'm not going to let them out of PT till they finish it. And go. Come on. I pushed myself far beyond anything I ever, ever thought myself capable of. Think about it. Get angry. Get angry at it, and then take it out on the gauntlet. That was the first time I didn't say straight away in my head, I can't do this. Sit down stand-ups. I don't like them at all. Job. I want you to sit down, but then stand right back up. I want you to sit down, but then stand right up. That's just horrible. That's mean. I caught Scotty not doing what he was supposed to be doing, and I made him do it over again. Scotty, come back and do your jump. Oh my god, I hate this. All right, 20 of them. I don't like that you left early. I didn't. I'm pretty sure I can point out three people there that did like maybe one and a half. Let's go, Scotty. One. One. And he still wasn't doing everything 100%. Good. Up, up. That's right. You got this, come on. Scotty, you and me are gonna do them together, okay? Up, come on, come on. <laughs> up. I have never seen a kid in the four years here break down and start bawling like that. Come on, buddy, get down, get down, get down. You're okay, buddy. My mindset is if ever I, if I start hurting, I immediately stop. No, stay down, dude. What are you looking for? There you like go. with this, you're gonna start hurting after like the first station and you have, still have to finish. Like you can't just quit. It sucked. No, you gotta keep the body looking forward. There you go. Truth be told, maybe he's ever been challenged that way before, but this kid really needs to suck it up a little bit. I was actually very disappointed with that because I I had done the gauntlet and went through all of that pain and pushed myself, but only lost two pounds that week. Two, it just come on. Scotty's got me, and he knows what he's supposed to do to help his program out. And it's gonna be a matter of Scotty wanting to do it. Nobody can motivate him to do it. We all want Scotty to be successful. And it's too early to tell. Coming up, the scales never lie. I don't like the scale. I will shout that from wherever in the world. I don't, I hate the scale. When I came back from camp, from when I started crying. So don't cry. Like hysterically crying, like, I just wanted to leave the house. <gasps> I was bawling. I was like, this is not happening. <gasps>
Monday mornings will never be the same again. My worst weigh-in was spring break. I did not want to weigh in on the scale, so I was like, no, I'm not weighing in. Do I have to weigh in? No. Well, yeah. How do you think you did? I'm scared. OK. Just be really still for me. You gained five pounds. Oh, yeah. You know, I thought, you know, I had the program down to a Q, and I was really upset about it. It sucked, but that was the most I've gained ever going off campus. My best way in was after I ran the 5K. I'd been losing three, four pounds if I was lucky. So last week you were 314, and this week, 307.5. Woo! It felt amazing. I knew I was going to lose, but I wasn't expecting to lose that much, not even at all. Six and a half pounds, baby. Six and a half pounds. Hey, Tanisha, you ready? I don't like this here at all. I will shout that from wherever in the world. I don't, I hate this game. OK, be still. It's bouncing between 406.5 <laughs> and 407. <laughs> 100 pounds. And I was just excited. 100 down. Only a few more hundred to go. The fact is, when students haven't worked hard enough, the scale can be a harbinger of bad news. My worst weigh-in ever was uh, over the summer. There were some discrepancies in Scott's weight with the scale at our home, so we wanted to come to the doctor so that we could get his official weight, so that everything's put to rest, that this is what he weighs. I'm a little nervous. I'm always a little nervous when I weigh in. put on some of the weight back. We just have to work harder, don't we? OK. The time, yeah, I felt like I had just slapped everybody that had ever helped me in the face because it made me feel like I was a failure. It's a bump in the road. It's a devastating bump. And I know you're upset about it, but you can't let this bump rule anything, can you? I know you don't feel like it. I know what you want to do is go home and go to bed and not look and see anybody ever again. But that's not an option, is it? Now, looking back on it, I've realized that it, it just happens. It's what weight loss is. You, you know, there's going to be ups and downs. I believe that you know one of the primary reasons that Emily has transformed so brilliantly is because of the support that she has at home. Her parents haven't given her the opportunity to quit, and that's a big deal. When my parents see me, I think they're gonna um, like flip out. They're gonna be like, oh my gosh, you look so good. And hopefully they don't cry though. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. When I came back from camp, when I started crying, like hysterically crying, like I just wanted to leave the house, go back to the car. Oh, look at you. And he was bawling. I was like, this is not happening. <laughs> I told Lisa that, you know, I think I think I might cry. Well, I didn't realize I was going to completely break down. But that's what happened. When I saw her, it's just like, uh, it was almost like an outer body experience. I thought it was pretty funny. Like, I'm not going to lie. I didn't cry. I don't cry over seeing my parents. We've just tried so many different programs. And finally, here's something that's worked. Oh, my goodness. The pictures don't do you justice. <laughs> wow. She just makes me so proud. I'm so happy. Don't cry. <laughs> I was helping 
hoping that by making a on-program pizza, it would be a meal that they could all enjoy and eat together while still supporting Tanisha. It's still warm. That's good. Mom, I hope you like it. I don't taste anything. I really feel that Tanisha's mom's actions do need to speak louder than her words, and she needs to start getting on board. So today I've seen a lot of things. Some of them I'm a little concerned about, like the support of the family. Okay. Let's just be honest, if you had to eat pizza and other foods and then these other foods are constantly surrounding you, like it's gonna be overwhelming. We don't eat fast food in this home okay. as, as you think we do. That was actually really the first time that they had met and I was like, dang. <laughs> I know old habits die hard, and you're very used to the foods that you eat, and low-fat foods, non-fat foods have a different amount of flavor. And so when you're doing something opposite of what she's trying to do, it's going to be harder. Yeah, she's angry. I, can, I know that. Look, she's... <laughs> I know. I felt a little attacked from Coach Nicole. That's what I felt. Melody has an open mind. Obviously, she wants what's best for her daughter, but it, it's going to take some time to grow accustomed to it. Would you think that'd be possible, like, to try to encourage her to okay. cook more for you? Yeah, I will. I think Tanisha's doing a great job, and I think I'm doing a great job with her. Even though I may not be on program with her, I think she's doing a great job. My mother is just unwilling to look at it from another point of view. That's just how she is. It's not the best quality that person can have, but like I said, she's old, and it's going to take some time to change habits like that. Coming up. I'm going back to Wellspring so I can go home skinny and beautiful. Wellspring definitely brought me closer to both my parents. I used to avoid really everyone, and now I hate being alone, to be honest. I can celebrate now. I've worked my butt off to get here. So therefore, ha! Wellspring definitely changed my life. I uh, wouldn't be the person I am today if it weren't for Wellspring. I used to be really homesick. I wouldn't go home, but I grew up. I got tougher, and I lost weight, but then I gained confidence. I can celebrate now. Like, I've worked my butt off to get here, so therefore, ha! Going into Wellspring, I was a 13-year-old kid. I didn't think it was going to work, and I struggled. I uh, lost 75 pounds, but gained 18 of it back over the summer. I feel like I was a huge success because I obviously lost 75 pounds, and some people can't even do that in a year when they try, and I did it in four months. My experience with Wellspring has brought me closer to both my parents. I feel a lot closer to them than before. We hang out a lot more. I used to avoid really everyone as much as I could. Now I hate being alone, to be honest. You're in the 200s. Yes! When I look in the mirror, I definitely want to try to make myself seem perfect and appealing to others, because I actually care about what I look like. Right now, I am 157, and I'm 23 pounds with my goal weight at uh, 135. Wellspring definitely has changed my life for the better, and I'm glad I found it, and I'm glad I decided to come. Since coming to Wellspring, I've lost 160 pounds, and I am halfway to my goal weight. Maybe one day I'll be able to look in the mirror and see a difference, but right now I can definitely feel the difference. It's just hard for me to see it. 
and I never thought that even giving it my all that I would have much success. My biggest mental challenge was believing in myself. Since coming to Wall Street, my social circle was that big and then all of a sudden I came to Wall Street and it was ginormous. Going back to Wall Street, I know I'm gonna hit plateaus. I know it's gonna be a struggle, but I'm totally ready for it so I can go home skinny and beautiful. I still have 160 pounds to lose to my goal weight of 150. I've come a long way this year and I'm ready to turn my life around. I'm just looking forward to coming back to Wall Street and continuing on my journey and meeting new people. I'm excited. <laughs>